All right, guys, I got something that might be kind of interesting. Working on my tree journeyman 425 with the Dynapath Delta 20 control. I don't know how well this video will come out. It's it's like five o'clock on Easter Sunday, and I thought it would be quiet down here. I could sneak in here and make a quick video about this, but no way. Both neighbors on both sides are here running air hoses and power tools and forklifts and yelling and screaming at each other. So yeah, I cannot wait to get out of this shop, but we'll see if we can get through this. Basically the problem is that I replaced the e-stop button right here because it was broken, physically broken when I bought the machine. They had the wires jumped together. I replaced the button, but the functions are not working correctly. So if you go to fault status, it tells me that we're in e-stop mode right now. The button is out and the motion stop lights on. I should be able to hit reset right now and you should hear the main contactor pull in but it's it's not doing anything so the computer knows I'm hitting reset or the control knows I'm hitting reset but for whatever reason it's not pulling in the main contactor all right this is the wiring diagram for a journeyman 325 I don't have the diagram for this particular machine but it's the same control same manufacturer so I think this portion of it anyway is the same so what should happen according to this schematic is that basically the, the e-stop button right now is closed and this contact right here so one CRE that's a contact from this relay right here so what should happen it's normally open what should happen is when I push the reset button power should go through here to 206 through the e-stop button through this chain right here for the over travel switches through this thing here which is the motor over temperature stuff through a normally closed terminal here from 2CRE which is the over, over travel switch for the Z axis and then it should power the coil for 1CRE which is basically our enable relay and once 1CRE pulls in that'll pull in the main e-stop contactor and we're good to go so what we got to figure out is why basically why this isn't working right now what's happening is one CRE is not pulling in and yeah we need to figure out why so basically once one CRE uh, coil is energized then this contact closes and basically it's a latching relay so once one CRE is latched then the machine basically is powered up and ready to go Okay, it's gonna be loud because the cooling fans are running. We're doing all this with the machine powered up. So what we're gonna do is check 214 and 206, then 205. And basically we're just looking for, for a voltage on some of these terminals, see if we can figure out what's going on. And luckily this machine has a terminal strip, so it makes it really easy to do this testing. So what I'm gonna do is start with 206, which is right here. And I'm just going to push the reset button. You guys watch the voltmeter. All right, does everybody see that? So we get about half a volt, which obviously is not enough to pull in our relay. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same test, except I pushed the, the e-stop button. So basically the circuit is open. You see that? So what that tells us is that the circuit is capable of basically working, but it's not capable of sending enough amps out to make the, the relay actuate. All right, so let's try a little bypass test here. Okay, so that wire right there is 214, and so what we're going to do right now is connect directly from 214 over to 209 at the relay, and see if we can basically just bypass all of this malarkey here and make the relay pull in. So 209 is right here on this diode.
and 214. So I'm gonna push the, e step, the reset button. So nothing happened. Okay, so now I'm gonna do basically the opposite. I'm gonna take power from a known power source. I'll probably come up here and go to 200. That should be 24 volt DC. And I'll connect it directly up to 214. And it's disconnected from the, the control right now. So shouldn't hurt anything by doing that. So we're listening for the contactor to pull in. Oh, I need to, I need to close the e-stop switch. Hang on. All right, let's try that again. So 200 to 214. Yeah. Okay, so we know the circuit integrity is good. We just don't have enough amps. Okay, so this board right here handles our inputs and outputs. So I think we better just get it out and have a look. Well, let's take a closer look at this schematic real quick. So what I just did in the machine, in case you weren't following, is I connected basically a jumper wire to 214. So I connected it right here. And then in the first test, the jumper wire ran over to here, right at this relay coil. And when I pushed the reset button, nothing happened. The, the relay did not close. So the second test that I did is I connected, I removed this connection right here, and then I connected basically from this terminal right here, 200 which is a known 24 volt power source. I connected it right here and you saw that the relay closed. So what that means is that all of this jazz right here, the e-stop button, the over travel switches, the motor overloads, the, the z-axis over, over travel switch, all of this jazz is good and the, and the relay is good, everything is good downstream of here. The problem is we're not getting what we need right here. So on the schematic here, you got inputs at the top. This is part of the control panel that you're actually pushing where the push buttons are. And these are your outputs right here. So if we look at the actual circuit board, this bottom connector right here is J1. That's your, that's your inputs. And the top connector right here, J2, is your outputs. So if we look at the schematic, it tells us that the reset output right here is pin 23 on connector J2. So luckily for us, they're nice and they labeled all the, the pins. So there's pin 23 right there and it corresponds to this pin right here. So I'll save you guys the suspense. If you follow that trace through the board, it ends up right here and it runs right into this chowdery looking resistor. So there's our problem. Now these are just relays. These Potter Brumfield relays right here. And they're capable of switching like 10 watts. So I, I'm not exactly sure the purpose of this resistor but I'm guessing it's just some kind of a current limiting resistor and by the looks of it I'd say it was asked to limit a little bit too much current. So we'll take a look here real quick and see what's going on, but obviously that has to be fixed. So these are 16 ohm 4 watt resistors. See that one right there, spot on, 16 ohms, they're all the same. 16 ohms, but look at this little guy. Yeah, it's 100 kilo ohms. So that explains why it's not able to, to send us enough current to pull in that resistor. So we got to fix it. 
I don't think there's any reason to replace the, re the relay because we know it's capable of switching. It's just not sending out enough current and that's because of this resistor. So yeah, I think we just need to replace it. And you know, I got a million and two electronic components around here, but I don't have any resistors that are that are this large. They're so I have 15 ohm resistors, but they're only quarter watt. So I'll have to order them. Okay guys, I bought some new resistors and it's kind of hard to tell just from looking at them what the what the power rating is for these resistors. So what I did is I measured the leads and I bought some replacement resistors that had the same diameter leads. These are 2 watt resistors. And I'm assuming that there's standard sizes for the leads based on the power rating of the resistors, but maybe it's just random. I don't know. So anyway, I'm going to replace this burned out resistor with a 2 watt resistor and we'll hope for the best. Now what we could do is just take it from one of the other circuits here because there's 32, basically 32 relays on this board, so 32 outputs and according to the schematic it only uses four. So yeah, we could pretty easily figure out which four it's using and just steal one from the other circuit, but you never know. You know, it might get the board might be sold to some other for some other purpose or whatever somewhere down the road, so we might as well just do it, try to do it right. So anyway, I guess we'll see if we can get this resistor out of here. Shouldn't it be too bad. Yeah, we're not off to a very good start. There we go. Okay, I guess that's it. Not much to it. And there's no testing that we can really do here on the bench. We'll have to put it back in the machine and, and see what happens. But if some of the smart viewers that I have could comment down in the comment box about you know, the actual purpose of these resistors, I'd love to know. I think I said earlier that they were current limiting resistors, but that wouldn't make sense because they're only 16 ohms. 
So I don't know the exact purpose of it. It almost seems to me like they're using these resistors like a fuse. And you know, all that this relay does is it powers a look at the schematic. So all it does is power this little ice cube relay, this one C R E ice cube relay. And typically, you know, those little ice cube relays, the coil only takes I don't know, maybe 30 milliamps, 40 milliamps, so certainly less than one watt as far as power goes in order to actually power the coil. And on top of that, you know, the reset button, that's a that's a momentary contact switch. You know, you're just pushing it on the control panel. You're not going to sit there and hold reset down for hours on end. So I don't know if they're just using these resistors to, to do a small amount of, of current limiting or if they're actually using them like a kind of a sacrificial element. Yeah, I'd be curious to know what some of the smarter electronic gurus had to say about that. I wish I just I wish I knew that stuff off the top of my head, but I don't. All I know is that all I know is that this one was burned out, and that's not a good thing. So as far as why this resistor burned out, I'm not sure about that either. And I, I talked to a buddy here locally. He said he thought it, it must have been a backfeed issue, but that wouldn't be possible because if you look at the schematic, there is a a diode that protects this basically this output section, and the only way you could have a back feed would be if you actually shorted right to this wire 214 between the board and this diode. And even then, you couldn't pass any current through this section of the board unless that relay was also closed. I really don't know. Maybe we ought to put a, an amp clamp on this e-stop circuit before we go you know, testing this reset function and just make sure that it's not pulling more than say 30 or 40 milliamps through this section of the of the circuit. Well guys, I'm sorry I wasn't able to film a follow-up to our board repair. I actually sold this machine and I discovered this problem between the time that I sold it and when I delivered it. And I actually had the board out of it here at my shop to repair the board, but then I had to go down to the customer's location and install the board and do the testing there. And you know, they're all standing there watching me and there's there's just no way I can film it. So anyway, all I did was I put a I put an amp clamp around this wire right here that runs to the ice cube relay. This amp clamp in fact. And I measured 34 milliamps running through that circuit. So that's totally fine, totally normal. Should be between 30 and 40 I would think for a, a normal ice cube relay coil. So we don't have any kind of a you know high amperage element in this whole string. Everything is fine. That's only 816 milliwatts. So that should be well within the current carrying capacity of, you know, the resistor that we soldered in and, and everything in this chain. So, yeah, I guess it's all good. You know, the, the machine functions as normal. You pull out the e-stop button, you push the reset button on the panel, and the e-stop relay comes on and the main contactor pulls in. So that's exactly what it should do. And we got rid of the, the jumper wire. So, yeah, all good. So I'm sorry that I wasn't able to film that. It just isn't always possible. And I'm sure you can hear the angle grinder screaming away in the background right now. So there's you know lots of challenges to filming these projects. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. And if anybody has a theory about the purpose of that resistor on the board, I would love to know. Again, it was a 16 ohm resistor. And basically all it was doing was providing a link between the, the relay that was on the board and the coil that's on this e-stop relay. So my theory is that they're using it as a sacrificial element, basically like a fuse, but maybe I'm totally wrong about that. Love to know what you guys think. So thanks for watching.